nail, 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 tweezers. Get some tweezers. These were by request. Human hand, not including. Yeah, you don't get the beautiful nails. Um, you have two tweezers. These are ceramic tip tweezers, but they don't feel like ceramic. They feel like plastic, but they're they actually are ceramic. They're like a ceramic sized plastic. Um, both in extremely pointy and not quite as pointy types, uh, but they're the same cost. And what's nice about these is the tips will not bend. Like, yeah, they won't. Um, like usually when you get very nice tweezers, the tips will bend and twist eventually um, over time. Uh, these don't because they're ceramic. I mean, I think eventually they will break, but they are, they have some flexibility to them, but they'll, they won't bend and not spring back. And then you can replace the tips if you like. Uh, so these are the pointy, but not so pointy that it's like, ow, I just poked myself. These are the extremely pointy and like, they will like, ow, like don't, ow, don't do that. They're very sharp. Um, very good for grabbing. I think like, you know, 0201s, 0105s, these are good. 0603s are bigger. You can probably get away with these just fine. 402s, maybe one or the other. Um, because they're ceramic, not only do they not bend, but they're great for use with hot air and rework. And um, if you want to dunk something in a solder pot or grab something out of a solder pot, use these ceramic tweezers. Next up, Joe. Also non-magnetic, obviously, no. because they're ceramic um, and non-conductive. Um, we have some key switches. Um, these are, um, we had a set last week. So these are like bike lock style key switches and there's two kinds. This one, I'm going to get the demo image. But I don't know. Yeah, there's a demo that came. Well, you can go to the product page and check it out. Okay. Um, to this one, you see there's two notches in it. That means you can remove the lock after you turn it on or turn it off. Whereas uh, we have one that's also like a momentary where if you want to turn it on, the turning on part uh, doesn't, uh, you can't remove the key. Do you want to try? Yeah. The key? yeah. Sorry Thank that. you. That's fine. So yeah. So see, you turn the key, the contacts join, and then you can remove the key because this is the on off version. And yeah. then if you look um, on the yeah, other one, the momentary, you see, uh, she turns the key. You can't remove the key when it's on. So that means like, you know, to take the key back, you have to remove it so it can't be left on for some reason. You know, uh, like ignitions are like this. Obviously you wouldn't want to leave your key in the car. So to turn off the car, you have to remove the key. That's kind of the idea behind the momentary. Um, both uh -huh. are where everyone you get is going to have the same keys. These are not secure. Do not use these for valuables. This is like a fun yeah. switch interface that it's like, well, you do need a thing to turn it on, but like, believe me, somebody with a big pen could probably pick the lock in like 10 seconds. So it's not, yep. um, not for your nuclear weapons. Next up. Okay. This is something I've always wanted. It's a polarity switcheroer for 5.5 millimeter outer diameter, 2.1 millimeter inner diameter DC uh, jacks. So if you have a device that's center negative and you want to use a center positive power supply with it, because it's really hard to find center negative these days, um, instead of cutting something and soldering it and getting it backwards or whatever, um, this thing plugs, either you plug into the device and now you have a new port or you plug your power supply into it and um, whatever was center positive is now center negative and it was center negative, it's now center positive. So you go to the overhead and I'll, I can show this very quickly. It's, it's simple yet ingenious. So, um, you have your multimeter. So this is normally nine volts, which makes sense. And it's center positive. So you see the outer ring is ground and the center ring is red. And then that gives you a positive voltage. If I plug in the switcheroer, now when I put the red probe on the inside and the black probe on the outside, you'll see it's now negative nine volts. So it doesn't change the voltage. It just swaps the positive and negative. Alrighty. Next up. From our friends across the pond at Pinmaroni, we now have a dual PCIe uh, interface for, um, you know, MMC cards or storage PCIe devices. Now you get two ports. So two drives, maybe one AI accelerator in a drive, maybe 
I don't actually know my cellular modem and the disk or cellular modem and an AX accelerator, whatever. Um, it goes underneath the Raspberry Pi. It's uh, a lovely design with two power supply, two power supplies, one for each, and then it looks in the center like there's like a uh, little uh, PCIe switch that'll automatically um, swap between the two. So um, they've really uh, done a great job designing PCIe add-ons for the Raspberry Pi 5. Doesn't work with the Pi 4, but if you have a Pi 5, you want to use PCIe stuff. This has everything you need to get started, including all of the hardware. All right, next you up. You can mount it, attach things, have fun. Um, from Espressif, they have a new version of the ESP32 cam. What was previously just ESP32 is now the ESP32 S3 cam, which is great because they've really um, improved on a lot of the designs. Just showing it with Adabot. Yeah. Um, so it has a screen built in now, which is lovely. So go to the overhead. Let me see if I can get it to recognize. Okay. So when I look at it, I don't know if I can get it to do it now. It was doing facial recognition, but right. hold on. Maybe I need to. Maybe it has to be uh, right side up. Let me see. Give it a second. If so. Do, do, do. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I did not look at the uh, manual. <laughs> I just plugged in. I was like, oh. Yeah, sure. Okay, hold on. Maybe I have to do it like this. Oh, yeah. So you can see. Yeah. Sorry. It's very hard to. Uh... Yeah. Oh, I apologize. Sorry, 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 sorry. I just rebooted it. This is embarrassing. Okay, live demos. <laughs> okay. It's now. Okay. Yeah, it's doing it. Face. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, did it. So yeah, you can see it's recognizing my yeah face. Okay. So uh, sorry about that. Um, it has an OV twenty six forty camera, uh, interface buttons, um, a nice little display that you can remove if you want and use a different display. Um, SD card, eight megabyte flash, eight megabytes PS RAM, um, some LEDs. I don't know, camera. Yeah, so it can do. Um, it has a, like a slight AI accelerator for facial recognition. Uh, when we we actually got really good um, camera support in the um, Memento. So while we don't necessarily have support immediately for this board as of this video, we'll probably add it really soon, um, and you'll be able to do a lot of these things in Circuit Python as well. Alrighty, so don't forget that. Okay, next up, live demo. Um, Okay, next up, um, this is kind of a weird one, but you know, if you are doing a lot of stuff with IR hacking, this might be kind of handy. Um, so we have IR transmitters, IR receivers. This is a breakout board for the TSMP 96000 from Vichy. And this is a very interesting sensor chip filter. What it does is it looks for infrared signal 940 nanometers. So it's like, you know, infrared standard. And the carrier frequency can be between 20 and 60 kilohertz. And normally these are really like narrow band 38 kilohertz. But this one can accept a wide range of frequencies and it will give you the carrier output signal. Um, what that means is that if you don't know what frequency an IR remote is, or you want your product to support any IR remote, because it's like a code learning thing where it will learn any infrared remote, you can use this and it will decode, it will read the IR signal and like do some filtering on it but give you the output um, only if it's between 20 and 60 kilohertz and then with the carrier, and then you would probably want a separate reader, uh, a different sensor that's tuned to that frequency once you know what it is, that would give you the demodulated output. So this does not give you demodulated output. This gives you carrier signal IR output, but it does only do that if it's valid IR signal Yes, you know, between 20 and 60 kilohertz and is and is valid uh, like infrared square wave. So um, it's it's kind of like for advanced IR hacking, but um, I we couldn't find any other breakout boards for this. And I thought since I was doing a lot of IR stuff, this would be maybe handy for some people. Okay. And the start of the show tonight besides you, Lydia, the, the community, the customers who show and share and publish, do all the things to make this world a fun place to be in at times is... Da -da -da. Hello. It is the revision of the RGB 
LCD shield, one of our older products that originally came in kit form. Like you'd have to solder all the components. Yeah. And then during the chip shortage, we couldn't get the main component, the MCP 23017. And then I was like, fine, you know, we'll just, maybe we'll just continue and maybe we'll just wait. And then um, I was actually able to get the SMT version of the chip before the DIP version. I was like, you know what? This is a good excuse to revise this design and make it fully surface mount because um, it's easier for us to pick and place stuff these days than to make a kit. And honestly, most people don't want to solder together a shield kit. They want to have something kind of ready to go. So um, what's nice about this is it usually only uses I squared C. You get five button inputs and you get LCD output plus the RGB backlit. Uh, light is controlled. Um, you can turn the R, G, or B on or off. So you have like eight different colors. And uh, if it's on any Arduino compatible, uh, let's go to the overhead. Um, so this is like an RP2040, for example, because I just like using that. And um, this just shows as I press each button, you know, the code switches between the different colors, like purple, nice purple color. Um, and then couple changes that were made is I used to use the A4, A5 pin because that was at the time the Arduino pins. Now we use the SCL, SDA pins up there. So that's why it works on any Arduino compatible. Um, you can also change the voltage for the logic level. We default to five volts, but you can cut this and use the default voltage or solder to three to force it to three. Um, if you have a very, very old Arduino, you can solder close the SDL, SDA and SCL lines. Uh, to force it to use A4, A5. Contrast pot is nice and easy to twist. Uh, and then there's a reset button as well, so you can reset your program. And then it doesn't come with the LCD. You would solder in whatever LCD you like. So in this case, it's a uh, you know positive style, and then there's also the negative style. Um, you can also use this with just plain backlight, 16 by twos, but then you don't get, of course, the RGB backlight. You would only get the... Um, buttons and the LCD control. So hold on. Let me reset this. Boop. Boop. Okay, there you go. Um but yeah if you just want to add a 16 by 2 LCD, they're very nice and readable, easy to use. Um and I can do it with only two pins and a lot less soldering. So these are going to be back in stock. All right. And with that is new products. Yay. New, 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 new. New.